The horror genre made some really nice strides this year, but it has also seen some bumps as well. Like, I mean, bumps. With 2023 wrapping up, I decided what better way to send off the year other than to make my holiday special be me ranking the top 10 horror movies of 2023. Let's get into it. Welcome back, I'm Sippin' Ice, and before we begin, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to stay up to date on all things horror. This list is actually factual based. There's no other list better than this one. <laughs> nah, you know I'm messing. Everyone has their own opinions on what they enjoy. What are your top 10 horror movies of 2023? Are there some movies I missed? Let me know down in the comments. We are a team in this. Just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Spoiler warning ahead. So this is your final warning, spoiler warning. Now, let's quit wasting time and get into number 10. It's a Wonderful Knife. I enjoyed It's a Wonderful Knife quite a lot. It started out strong, started falling down, but then the second act saved it from falling off the list. While the Miller portions were my favorite, the same cannot be said for the ending. I've never been a huge fan of mind control or anything surrounding it. All around, it's still a great watch with laughs and tension. Plus, I mean, Justin Long, need I say more? Actually, I could say, number nine, The Boogeyman. The Boogeyman had some great moments, one of those being with the always amazing David Dash Malashan, I know I mispronounced that, I'm sorry. The scene where Sophie Thatcher's character Sadie follows the noise caused by Lester. She steps in what we think is blood, but it's actually paint. It was a pretty good attempt at subverting expectations. Then we have Lester on the back of the closet door. When it first moved, I saw him there and got chills, realizing that the family hadn't yet noticed him. Great sequence, I mean, well done, well done. The ending, for the most part, was really well done. I just kept thinking about why weren't they using their phones, I mean... This is a modern day film, so why not use their phone's built-in flashlights and not Christmas lights that have to be plugged in? Obviously, it's because of the visuals, which were amazing, but come on, dog. And that really just makes me think. Number eight, Infinity Pool. Released two days after my birthday, Infinity Pool stars the talented Mia Goth and Alexander Skarsgård. We see the novelist James Foster and his wife M at a resort in Lee Tolka. After some time, James, M, Cleopatra Coleman, Gabby, Mia Goth, and Alban, Jalil Lesbert accidentally hit and end a local resident. This is when the true nature of the film begins. The country uses an Infinity Pool to clone someone who committed a heinous crime for a fee. The clone then takes their place in an execution. The movie evolves into James, along with a group of tourists committing crimes in order to watch their own executions in enjoyment. It all changes when James is confronted with his own clone. Infinity Pool has some flaws, but it's a thrilling ride, and just don't watch it with family kind of ride. Brother, trust. You do not want to watch this movie with your family, as there's some... Well, let's just say they had a good time. The film excels in the casting. Everyone in the group felt needed for the plot. And speaking of a movie with a plot, let's move to one without a plot. Number seven, Skinnamarink. Initially released back in 2022, it had a theatrical release on January the 13th of 2023. So it counts. Honestly, I won't lie to the team. I almost couldn't finish this movie. It started out rough. The plot, while lacking, the atmosphere they set is not. The thing that shines in this film is the dreariness and tense moments they build. No joke, one moment in this actually gave me a spine chill. So it does deserve major points for that, since most don't really get to me. This one really isn't for everyone, and it's very evident in the opening minutes. One thing I will say, if you're a fan of all the analog horror style of content that's been releasing lately, then this movie could be for you. It's basically take one of those five minute videos and turn it into a feature length film. It's a very serious movie, unlike number six, Totally Killer. Me typing in the script like I'm making an essay longer by adding as many words as possible. September 23rd, 2023 was the release date of the film Totally Killer. I'm just yanking you. Look, 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 I'm deleting it now. On a real note, this is a really fun time. Not all horror movies have to be so serious all the time, but they also can't be comedy the entire time either. And Totally Killer balances between the two perfectly, with casual jokes pointing at how times were back in my day, and the kill scenes were actually kind of tense. The cast was great and fun. They all meshed well, and they do have someone in the cast that will later in life don the ghost face mask. The only thing, usually I'm never a fan of the time travel or making a wish gone wrong strat, but here, it's so over the top, I don't mind it. They also had Lachlan Moreau, which is always a plus. Yet, you know which movie didn't have Lachlan Moreau? Number five, Insidious the Red Door. Released in July, Insidious the Red Door was Patrick Wilson's first time directing. 
Some didn't think he did a great job, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. The pacing was a tad slow, but the tone is set, it was well worth it. Seeing the difference in how both Josh and Dalton were handling their blank spots and how they came to realize what was truly going on was done great. My only true gripe with the film was the lack of Rose Burns' Renee. For obvious reasons, Elise wasn't going to be able to play a major role, but man, I miss both those ladies. During a majority of the film, I kept having the thought of, why is Renee's absence? Like, where is she? I was wondering why, but eventually I got my answer. It was understandable, but again, man, I missed her character for a majority of the film. Still, a great watch with some great scares, especially with that red-faced demon. Number four. Godzilla. Minus one. Brother, I won't lie to you. This very well could be the best Godzilla movie I have ever seen, and it's easily top three monster movie. The movie takes place after the end of World War II. I won't speak on it too much because if you haven't yet seen this movie, then please go check it out. All I will say is that Godzilla in this film is mean. Bro is not taking hostages, nor will he be teaming up with King Kong anytime soon. With us arriving to the top three horror movies of 2023, I just wanted to say I appreciate y'all and if you're enjoying the video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more. Now, let's get back to it with number three. Saw X. I mean, what can I say? I love this franchise, and yes, even those goofy ones. Well, maybe love is a strong word, but John Kramer is back. Amanda Young is back. What's not to celebrate? It does take place between Saw and Saw 2, so they aren't resurrected or anything, which is good, by the way. I gotta preface that. That is good. If you enjoy a good gory film, then you'll definitely find something to enjoy about this one. Number 2. Scream 6. If you visited my channel before, then you'll know how hard this was for me, considering Scream is my favorite all-time horror franchise. Released on March 10th, Scream 6 follows along the Carpenter sisters who have also mainlined the 5th entry. The crew being in the Big Apple wasn't a nice change of pace for the franchise and the core four has become one of my favorite friend groups in recent horror. The series is at the sixth installment and they still found creative ways for people to meet their ends. I'm looking at you ladder scene. The only real thing I'll explain in just a second that I wasn't the biggest fan of was the reveal. Not the best but hey sometimes it just do be like that. The other thing that's not a real reason is Chad not dying off. Broden got the whole Et tu, Brute special. I mean, he was tag teamed and got the whole two piece combo meal. Dude really took 10 minutes worth of stabs to his whole torso and he was just cool with it. Don't get me wrong, I love Chad. He's my favorite of the new cast. I mean, come on, man. Come on, dude. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man. The head rule really played in bro's favor. The rule being, if it ain't to the dome piece, you're still good. I know I went off track, but it really is a great watch. The best part is, even if Chad did die, all I would have to do to see him again is say three simple words. But before we get into number one, let's show off some honorable mentions. Wow, what good participation trophy winners we had this year. Nah, I'm just yanking at their cords. For number one, what will it be? Make your bets now. Hurry before number one. Talk to me. Released in July of 2023, Talk To Me started hard and finished rock hard. Huh? The film was directed by the Philippu brothers, Michael and Danny of the Rocka Rocka YouTube channel. It was their first feature film and boy did they nail it, which... By the way, here's a little fun factoid for you that I just learned about literally as I'm making the script. The brothers crewed on the 2014 horror film The Babadook, which is crazy because if you play my horror quizzes on my community tab, then you would already know this. This ad is paid for by my community tab. Back to talk to me. Riley. Bro was treated extremely dirty for no reason. 
Lil Dude was just trying to fit in. He didn't really want to play the game. He was scared after the first party, but felt like he needed to do it. The rest of the group was phenomenal, and they complimented each other very well, from Haley to Daniel and Josh. But the complete standout was Sophia Wilde's character, Mia. I won't lie, I was caught off guard when she started to do the things she was doing by the end of the movie. The movie was so successful, there was already a sequel confirmed just months after the release. Get this. The running title for the sequel is Talk To Me. No, 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 not talk to me, talk to me. Like, instead of talk to me, it's talk to me with the two. So yeah, talk to me. The brothers even announced that they already shot a prequel, which is also very exciting. The list may be over, but the video isn't. With the year coming to a close, I just wanted to say thank you. This year has been amazing. I have more than doubled in subs this year, and it's all thanks to y'all. And when you decided to hit that subscribe button, to every like button you press, and to every video you watch, just know it put a big old smile on this dude. I hope this year treated all of y'all well and that y'all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. I also had some help though. Like I said, we a team in this. So another big shout out to everyone I've collabed with. You guys are brilliant and some dear friends of mine. You know what would be sick? Is if I could get them to pop in to say something. Okay, man, my turn now. Hey everyone, <laughs> how's it going? Uh, I just wanted to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This year has definitely been a good one uh, in terms of horror specifically, and next year is looking like it's going to be even better. So once again, thank you all for watching over the past year. We appreciate it. Uh, and yeah, I can't wait till next year. Merry Christmas. I just want to thank you, Sipping Nice for having me into some of your videos this year. The iceberg video has been an absolute pleasure to be a part of. And the fact that I can just branch out of my comfort zone, try something different, and honestly just love the entire experience. So yeah, once again, thank you so much. I also wanna thank the entire community. I hope everyone has a great Christmas and a great New Year's. And this year alone has been honestly just such an amazing journey on youtube so i couldn't really ask for anything else i'm sure there's going to be plenty of more projects that you'll see me on so uh yeah thank you all so much appreciate you so my year was pretty cool you know i did loads of collabs i did um a video of a sip and ice which will probably come out soon um so thank you for um, coming on to that i've done so many cool things this year and also um met so many wonderful people um, along the way so um merry christmas to the viewer and have a happy new year and merry christmas to you ice and have a happy new year to you yo what's up it's taylor brandon composer here on sip and ice's channel once again to wish you the merriest of christmases i hope you have a merry christmas and a happy new year and y'all keep sipping that ice Again, thank you for everything. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Stay chill, and I will see y'all next time. Because let's face it, baby, these days, you gotta have a sequel.